<laughs> is, uh, is there some, somewhere helpful in the Bible to turn to when my faith is being criticized or mocked by media or by anybody else, really? Let me start it off. Um, I, I think where uh, I go to my mind is going to be the, the Beatitudes, which yeah. is found in uh, both the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. I want to read uh, Matthew's version of this. Um, starting in verse 8, this is what uh, Jesus says. And I want you just to hold on to um, the ID markers that Jesus says here. Just listen to this. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God or children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. And listen to this last verse. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So whenever in those moments you feel like, I can't uh, be my full self, like just go to this passage, right? And allow Jesus to say who you are. Mm -hmm. Let Jesus say who you are. You are a son or a daughter of God because you are being persecuted in my name. You are part of my family. So just hold on to that. Mm. Amen. Love that. Well, I go to First Peter every time. Mm. Um, if you've not ever read First Peter, just a little bit of context. Peter is writing this letter uh, to these believers because they are being persecuted yeah. for their faith. And there's a lot of imagery in here that talks about them being exiles, which kind of harkens back to the Old Testament. They're on the same journey of just yeah. always being out of place, you know. And the thing about this is, is oftentimes when we think about Christians who were persecuted for their faith in the scripture, we automatically think they were being killed for their faith. Right. But that's mm. not actually what was happening right. with this audience. They were just being mocked because of their faith. Mm. And so some of the things that they were doing just didn't fit with their culture. They refused to worship Roman gods. They refused to enter into sexual promiscuity. Uh, they were mocked because of their particular worship practices. Yeah. They were mocked because they tried to get people to, to worship like them. And so a lot of what they were going through kind of looks like the modern day church. Yeah. We're not being killed for our faith, but sometimes we suffer for yeah. our faith. Certainly Christianity is not widely accepted sometimes, and yeah. that's painful. But here's what Peter says right in the beginning of chapter one. Um, he's talking about all of these trials and the different things that they're going through. And he says this starting in verse six. He says, in all of this, you greatly rejoice. You rejoice, even though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that you have the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire. That may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So essentially what he's saying is that these trials that you're going through, if you continue to persevere, if you walk through them, they're actually going to make your faith even stronger hmm. and they're going to remind you that my faith is real because i just was shook but i'm still standing yeah yeah we're actually on the same wavelength <laughs> because i immediately thought of first peter as well and when you yep. when you said first peter i'm like oh no no I <laughs> um, but i actually go to chapter two okay um so in i think christians in this world have typically taken one of three postures towards the culture one posture is hostility. Mm -hmm. Another posture is what I call accommodation, just kind of blending in. And then a third posture is isolation. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between a posture and a gesture. A posture is a default setting. Mm -hmm. A gesture might be appropriate from time sure. to time. Um, mm -hmm. But these postures are our default settings that we sometimes choose as we're engaging towards culture or as we're engaging the culture. And Peter in 1 Peter 2 kind of dispels each one of those three postures. Mm -hmm. When he says in chapter two, verse 11, dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles mm -hmm. to abstain from sinful desires, which wage war against your soul. So you're not gonna blend in, mm -hmm. you're gonna stick out and it's okay, that's mm -hmm. the way it's supposed to be. But then he says, live such good lives. This doesn't sound like hostility to me. Mm -mm. Right. It sounds like you're living, you're a blessing mm -hmm. to those around you. Mm -hmm. Live such good lives where among the pagans, you're not isolated, you're, you're in yeah. the world. Whether you like it or not, you're in the world. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may actually see your good deeds mm -hmm. and glorify God on the day that he visits us. Mm -hmm. You're living such an exemplary life that even though people are trying to find things to accuse you of, they can't help hmm. but glory. Imagine yeah. being in your school, being in your college, 
being at your work or whatever, in your family, and people are blessed by your presence. Hmm. That's what Peter is calling us to, to live such exemplary lives that even though they want to accuse you of doing wrong, ah, Christians, you know, mm-hmm. they can't help but glorify God for your presence yeah. in their life. Yeah. Hmm. That's good. That's good. Yeah, the, um, so the New Testament passage that comes to mind for me is Romans 12, 1, hmm. uh, which says, you know, in view of what God has done for us, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, mm-hmm. which is your reasonable worship. And then don't be conformed to, the, to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of yeah. your minds. And then he immediately goes into a description of church life. And I think you see here the basic elements of spiritual formation that you yeah. obey with your body and you meditate on the truth with your mind and that hmm. you do so as part of a community. But what I always notice about this is that the thinking and the living of God's will, the living out God's will, the discerning is good and pleasing and perfect will is always in contrast. Hmm. Don't be conformed. The word there is schematizo. Don't be, uh, don't be, don't be schematized. Don't be squeezed into a mold of the world. And hmm. just know that at some level, it's not a strange thing to ask this question. In some ways, the whole Bible is an answer to this question. You know, Mm. so much of scripture was written to a group of people who were being marginalized, criticized, persecuted to varying degrees by the media of their cultures and also by (laughs) others around them. Mm. So that verse is so huge. And then too, I know we would also say, so much of the Old Testament is a great resource in this regard. Daniel, oh my gosh, life in exile. You know, Joseph, the portions of his life Mm. in which he was being mistreated by everyone. And the Psalms, praying the Psalms. David says so many times, I was surrounded by an army. I had 10,000 on every side, but I wouldn't be afraid, Psalm 3, mm. Psalm 27, some of those places. Yeah. So be a person that praises the Psalms, be a person that regularly engages scripture, and you'll find stuff. You'll find mm-hmm. the ones we talked about, and you'll find so many yeah. beyond what we talked mm-hmm. about, because the Bible really is written to equip the type mm-hmm. of faithfulness in times like ours, for yeah. sure.